Welcome to a little bit of lab rat fun. We're gonna go ahead and put our network detective badge on and do a little bit of troubleshooting. This is multicast troubleshooting. So what we're gonna say is, is that off of Cat9K40, we have a Spirant test center port that is sending IGMP version two join requests for 239.1.1.1. 239.2.1.1, 239.129.1.1. So it is sending IGMP version two join requests to join those groups. That's fact number one. Fact number two, there is a Spiron Test Center port acting as a host off of Cat9K50 that is trying to send, that is sending IGMP version three request for source specific multicasts. I will just tell you that they're properly formed source specific multicast IGMP V3s with the proper source in them. And it's trying to join 232.1.1, 232.2.1, and 232.129.1. Another fact is, is that the subnet 10.1.2.0 is the transmission or the multicast server farm for all three ASM groups, any source multicast, those are the two three nines, and all three SSM groups, source specific multicast, those are the two thirty twos. Another fact is, is that uh, Cat9K20 is the rendezvous point for all of the ASM groups. As you know, there is no rendezvous point, rendezvous point needed for source specific multicast groups. What's the symptom? The symptom is that the receivers are not getting two out of three of the groups. The receiver off of IGMP version two is only able to get multicast traffic for group 239.2.1.1. The receiver off of CAT 9K50, which is sending IGMP V3 requests, again, properly formed ones, so don't worry about troubleshooting there, is only getting 232.2.1.1. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, first and foremost, I'm gonna probably go ahead and go to the LHR, which is the last top router. Now, I don't really care which one, since they're both having some problems. So typically what I would probably do is pick the IGMP version two one. The reason is not because it's IGMP version two and ASM, but because of the fact that I have to get through Cat9K40 to get to Cat9K50, so it's less devices to troubleshoot for. So first I'm gonna go to Cat9K40 and I'm gonna look for what I call the pull. So we're gonna do a show IP M route, and I'm looking for a star comma G for all three groups with an oil on there of that physical interface towards the Spirant test center. What I'm gonna tell you is we are gonna find it there. Now, we also know that two of the three ASM groups are working. And I'm sorry, one of the three ASM groups are working and one of the three SSM groups are working. So that kind of sort of takes away a number of things like if the IGMP version two off of Cat9K40 can actually successfully get 239.2.1.1, then as long as we don't have an RP filter on there that's only saying I can help you with 239.2.1.1, then we probably have an RP. What we're gonna find is one, on Cat9K40, we're gonna find that I actually have IGMP membership reports for all three of those IGMP version two groups, all of those ASM groups. We're also gonna do a show IP M route, and we're gonna discover that I have all of the star comma Gs for those groups. We're gonna notice we have oils. We're gonna also notice we have an incoming interface, and we have a properly connected RP we're even gonna be able to go to the rendezvous point and notice that the PIM star comma G joins for all three of these groups are there on the CAT 9K20. Let's go look. So we're gonna start on 40, which is, and let me just get these a little bit bigger. So we're gonna start on 40. 
and we're going to do a show IP IGMP group and we're going to see all three 239.1.1.1, 239.2.1.1, and 239.129.1.1. All three of them are there. We're going to do a show IP M route and we're going to see that I have a star comma G for 239.129.1.1. In fact, I have an S comma G. I have an S comma G there. I'm on cat 9K40. I have an S comma G, which means that traffic had to have some point in time actually made it there. Because I actually have the star comma G and the S comma G. I have the same for 239.1.1, star comma G and S comma G. And I have the same for um, 239.2.1.1. Now, if we come here and we say count, what we'll find is, is that if we come down to the one that's working, we actually see that we are forwarding traffic. The other ones are not. And here's what's so strange about that. Okay, what is so strange about that is that they actually have S comma G's, which means that the PIM and the underlying structure is all there and it's working. Now, what you also noticed is, is that I have 232 there as well on cat 9 k 40 So clearly that's also working properly. We can see that at the bottom. 232.129.1.1, 232.1.1.1, and 232.2.1.1. Now the interesting thing is, if we also say count on them, and we go down here, here are the 232s, and um, it claims that I probably was forwarding before, but actually I'm not forwarding now. So the question becomes, why? Okay, so why is he only getting 239.2.1.1? But he's not getting 1.1.1 and 129.1.1. Now, a lot of people don't necessarily pay attention to this. This is kind of sort of like one of those small things that it bites you. But since a lot of people don't pay attention to it, they don't know that. Let's look for something that is in common. A lot of times when I'm troubleshooting and playing network detective, it's what do the things that are working have in common or what do the things that are not working have in common? And I'll actually tell you what the things not working all four have in common. All four of them, 239.1.1.1, 239.129.1.1, 232.1.1, and 232.129.1.1 are all because of the way multicast works. There's overlapping uh, MAC addresses. So there's actually the first nine bits. So the first eight bits, and then the first, the, the top of uh, the high end bit, um, first nine bits are actually not used in taking the multicast IP address and then making a multicast MAC address. So all four of them that are not working are actually not working because they're all going to the exact same destination MAC address. How do I know that? Because I was playing with an impairment tool that I put between cat 9 k 20 and cat 9 k 40 that blocks only that destination MAC address. So let's go ahead and go to it. This is the MAC address right here. This is the destination MAC address that 232.1.1.1 239.1.1.1, and 232.129.1.1 are all going to use. How do I know that? Watch this. Let's go ahead and stop this, and let's put a Wireshark tap right here. 
And what you're going to see in front of me is you're going to see 232.1.1.1. 232.129.1.1, 239.1.1, 232.1.1. All of them are using the exact same MAC address right here. 0105E0101. So what's happening? Why is the other one not getting it? Because the first nine bits aren't used in the translation. Go ahead and Google it. But that's why 232 .1 .1 .1, 239.1.1.1, 232.129.1.1.1, 232.129.1.1.1. They all become that destination MAC address. 239.2.1.1. Two, that's lower order. So that becomes a different MAC address, where instead of this being a 1, it becomes a 2 and then it doesn't hit this filter or whatever other filter you're doing. So we stop this, and what do we see? Everything working. Hope you had fun playing the lab, Network Game of Fish, and playing Network Detective. See ya.